Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. In this video, we will learn about the light emitting diode, which is also commonly known as LED. So today in many electronic devices, by some or other way, these LEDs are commonly used. For example, today the LEDs are commonly used in smartphone displays as well as in the camera flashlights. Similarly, today the LED TVs are quite common. And then if we talk about the lighting, then the LEDs are used for the lighting in houses and the offices. And not only that, today from the street lights to the traffic signals or even for the display boards, the LEDs are commonly used. So in this video, let us understand the working of the LED, different types of LEDs as well as the advantages of the LED. And first, let us see the advantages of the LED. Now whenever the LED bulbs are used for the lighting, then they are more energy efficient than the conventional bulbs. Also the lifespan of these LED bulbs is more than the conventional bulbs. Then the third advantage of the LED is that it can be operated in the fast switching applications. And the other advantages are the smaller size and the better controllability. Now here the controllability is in the sense that the brightness of the LED can be easily controlled. So these are the some of the advantages of the LED. So now let us see the working of the LED. So as its name suggests, similar to the PN junction diode, it is also one kind of diode. But whenever the current flows through it in the forward direction, then it emits the light of the particular color. So let's understand the physics behind it. Now as we had seen in the earlier video of PN junction diode, whenever it is forward bias, then the holes on the P side starts moving towards the N side and similarly the electrons on the N side starts moving towards the P side and in a way both holes and electrons contributes in the flow of current and during the movements these charge carriers used to recombine with each other so in the PN junction diode whenever these electrons and holes recombines with each other then they release the energy in the form of heat but in case of the light emitting diode, whenever they recombine with each other, then they release the energy in the form of light. And it can be further explained using the energy band diagram. So in the crystal structure, the free electrons have a more energy than the electrons which are still in the valence orbit. And we can say that the free electrons are in the conduction band and the holes or the empty space which is left by the free electrons is still in the valence band. So whenever the electrons and hole recombines, then the electrons from the conduction band comes into the valence band. Or in other words, it comes from the higher energy level to the lower energy level. And as you know, whenever the electron jumps from the higher to the lower energy level, then it releases the energy in some form. So in the normal PN junction diode, this energy is released in the form of heat. Because in the fabrication of this PN junction diode, the different semiconductor materials like silicon and germanium are used. And in these materials, during the recombination of holes and electrons, the energy is released in the form of heat. On the other end for the LEDs, during the recombination or the transition of the electron, the energy is released in the form of light or the photon. Because in the fabrication of the LED, different semiconductor compounds like gallium arsenide and gallium phosphides are used. And in this type of semiconductor compounds, during the recombination, the energy is released in the form of photons. And the energy of the emitted photon is equal to the band gap. That means the energy difference between this conduction and the valence band. And usually, this band gap is represented in the electron volt. So if Eg is the band gap, then the energy of the photon can be given as hc divided by lambda where h is the Planck's constant and c is the speed of light and the lambda represents the wavelength of the emitted light so as you can see from the equation the wavelength is inversely proportional to the band gap so by band gap engineering we can change the color of the emitted light so here is the list of different semiconductor compounds which are used to generate the different colors of light. So now if we talk about the electrical characteristic of the LED, then it is very similar to the PN junction diode. And if you see the VI characteristic of the diode, 
then it will be very similar to the rectifier diode. But for the LED, the forward voltage drop is larger than the PN junction diode. So for the PN junction diode, we know that the forward voltage drop is in the range of 0.6 to 0.7 volt. But for the light emitting diode, depending on the emitted color, the forward voltage drop can vary from 1.8 volt to the 3.5 volt. So as you can see from the graph, as we move from infrared towards the blue light, then the forward voltage drop of the diode will increase. So for any LED in the forward bias condition, when the applied input voltage is more than the forward voltage drop, then the LED will emit the light of the particular color. But without any kind of series resistor, the current which is flowing through the LED will be very high. And due to that, the LED may get damaged. So if you see the data sheet of any LED, then there is always mentioned the maximum forward current of the LED. And the current which is flowing through the LED should always be less than this limit. So to restrict the current, the series resistor should always be connected with the LED. Alright, so here is the list of the different specifications of the LED which you will find in the data sheets. And we have already talked about the first three specifications that is LED current, the forward voltage drop of the LED and the wavelength of the LED. So let's talk about the last two specifications. Now the brightness or the luminous intensity is usually defined for the LED at a specific current. And this brightness is defined in the unit of millicandela. So while selecting the LED for the specific application, one should also consider this specification. Then the other specification which you will often find in the data sheet is the viewing angle. So basically it defines the directivity of the LED. And if you see the data sheet of any LED, then you will find this type of polar radiation pattern for the LED. So basically it defines the angle from the maximum intensity where the intensity drops to the 50%. So for the given graph, the intensity is maximum at the center and as we move away from the center, then the intensity starts dropping in the either direction. And at this point, the intensity drops to the 50%. So for this LED, the viewing angle will be equal to roughly 15 degree. And if we consider the full angle, then it will be equal to 30 degree. But in the data sheet, usually it is specified as the half angle. So this is all about the different specifications of the LED. And at the last, now let us briefly talk about the different types of LEDs. So the first type of LED is the through hole type of LED. And still it is very popular among the electronic hobbyists and still it is used in the many applications. Then the second type of LED is the SMD LED or it is known as the surface mount LEDs. So these type of LEDs are very tiny in the size and they are mounted or installed on the circuit board itself. And today, they are quite commonly used in the LED bulbs and the other applications. Then if we talk in terms of the power, then there are high power LEDs. So these LEDs can handle a much more current than the normal LEDs. And therefore, they are much brighter than the normal LEDs. But because of their large power dissipation, they are always used with the heat sinks. Then the other type of LED is the COB LED and it is known as the cheap on board LED. So it is very similar to the SMD LED but here so many tiny LEDs are installed on the same chip and hence it is much brighter than the other types of LEDs. Then the other type of LED which is commonly used today is the RGB LED. So if you look at the through hole type of RGB LED then it contains the four leads. So if it is a common cathode type of LED, then it has a common cathode and the three anodes for the different colors. That means three anodes for the red, green and the blue LED. And by changing the current through each LED, we can get the different shades of color. So this type of RGB LEDs are also available in the SMD packages. And this type of LEDs are quite commonly used for the decoration purpose. And at the last, let us talk about the alphanumeric LEDs. So this type of LEDs are used to display the numbers and the alphabets in the various industries. So these are the different types of LEDs which is quite commonly used in the today's world. So I hope in this video you understood what is LED, how it works and what are the different types of LEDs. So if you have any question or suggestion, 
do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos